In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate a partner's outside basis. So here's the formula we're going to use. We're going to start with a partner's initial basis, which I'll show you how to calculate in a minute, and then we're going to make some adjustments. There are some things we're going to add to the initial basis, and there are some things we're going to subtract to the initial basis, and ultimately that will result in the partner's outside basis at any given point in time. So, let's start with the initial basis. How do we figure out what a partner's initial basis is in their partnership interest? Well, the answer is it depends. It depends on how that partner acquired the partnership interest. If they acquired the partnership interest by contributing property to the partnership, then their initial basis is going to be the amount of any cash they transferred to the partnership, plus the basis of any non-cash property that they transferred to the basis. For example, if they gave $10,000 of cash to the partnership, along with land that had a fair market value of a million dollars and an adjusted basis of $20,000, we would ignore the fair market value of the land, just look at its adjusted basis, add that to the cash being contributed, and the initial basis and the partnership interest would be $30,000. Now, if there were any liabilities uh, being assumed, if the partner was uh, contributing uh, this, these properties, uh, the cash and the property to the partnership, but they were also assuming some partnership liabilities, then that would also increase the initial basis. And if they happen to be contributing land that had a liability associated with it, and then they were getting some debt relief of not being fully responsible for that liability anymore, so then that reduction would actually reduce their initial uh, basis. Now, let's say that they're not contributing property and that the way that they obtained this uh, partnership interest was by performing services for the partnership. If that is the case, if they obtain their uh, partnership interest by performing services, then the initial basis in their partnership interest is going to be the amount of any compensation income that the partner recognizes. Remember, if you receive a capital interest uh, in a partnership in exchange for performing services, uh, then you're going to have some compensation income. You're going to have some taxable income. Now, if you're receiving a profits interest, strictly a profits interest in a partnership in exchange for performing services, generally you're not going to have any compensation income. There are exceptions, but that's why I put if any here. So if you receive a comp uh, capital interest in a partnership in exchange for services, though, you're definitely going to have some compensation income and that's going to be your initial basis. Now, what if you bought the partnership interest from somebody. So if you acquired the partnership interest by purchasing it, then your initial basis will be the purchase price uh, plus your share of any partnership liabilities. If you receive the partnership interest by inheritance, if someone died and you received the partnership interest, then your initial basis is going to be the value of the partnership interest on the date that that person died or the alternate valuation date if that applies. And if someone just gave it to you, they say, hey, here you go, here's a partnership interest, uh, then your initial basis would be the lesser of the donor's basis plus any gift taxes or the value of the partnership interest. So that's how you calculate the initial basis in the partnership interest. Again, it depends on the way the partner obtained the partnership interest. Once you know that initial basis, then you go and make adjustments to it because things happen over time. For example, the partner might make additional contributions to the partnership. So they have the initial basis, and let's say that's $30,000 is their initial basis. But then at some point, they say, you know what? Hey, here's $5,000 cash to the partnership. Uh, so then that's going to increase. So the initial basis, $30,000. You put in another $5,000 at some point. Now your outside basis is $35,000. Also, if a partner increases their share of partnership liabilities, that will increase their outside basis. When you increase, when you take a greater share of the partnership liabilities, it's treated as if you had contributed cash to the partnership. Okay, so increase in partners in your share of partnership liabilities going to increase your outside basis. Also, your share of partnership income. So if the partnership has a hundred thousand dollars of income and you are a 25%, uh, you have a 25% profit uh, interest, then you would have $25,000 would be your share of the partnership income, right? 100,000 of income times your share, 25%. So your uh, outside basis would go up by 25 grand. Also, your share of any tax exempt income generated by the partnership. Now, when that profit that tax exempt income generated by the partnership flows through to the partner, the partner is not going to be taxed on that because it's tax exempt income but it will still increase the partner's basis, okay? And then also the basis, uh, outside basis will be increased uh, by the partner's share of any depletion deductions in excess of the uh, basis 
Uh, so if they, they, they say there was uh, eighty thousand dollars of depletion, uh, depletion deductions for a piece of property that had so here let's say eighty thousand, and it had a basis of fifty thousand. The property had a uh, the property had a basis of fifty thousand, but there were eighty thousand depletion deductions. Then that difference, that excess amount, thirty thousand, would increase, uh, be added to the adjusted basis. It would increase the partner's outside basis. Now. Things that are subtracted, any distribution of cash or property from the partnership to the partner. This does not include guaranteed payments. Okay, so guaranteed payments, I'll just abbreviate here, GP, do not affect the partner's outside basis. So this is not a guaranteed payment we're talking about. Uh, we are talking about uh, just, hey, we had a great year. Uh, here, here's $8,000 cash, okay? So any distribution of cash or property partnership to the partner is going to decrease uh, the partner's outside basis. Now, remember, the outside basis can never be negative. It cannot go below zero. So I'm saying, yeah, these things are subtracted, but the bottom line is it will never go below zero. No matter what the distributions are or anything like that, the outside basis can never go below zero. Now, if there's a decrease in the partner share or partnership liabilities, uh, that will decrease the partner's outside basis. If the partnership is incurring losses, the partner's share of those losses will decrease outside basis. And again, not below zero. Uh, now, the partner share of any non-deductible expenses, for example, let's say there were some life insurance premiums, that were not taxed, uh, life insurance premiums are generally not tax deductible, or if there was some kind of disallowed loss, uh, some kind of non-deductible expense, and I'm not talking about capital ex expenditures, not something that was capitalized by the partnership. I'm talking about non-deductible expenses, like a disallowed loss, life insurance premium. Uh, the partner's share of those non-deductible expenses uh, will be subtracted right, the, as, as an adjustment. So it's going to decrease uh, the, the outside basis for that partner. And then also the partner's uh, outside basis will be decreased um, by depletion deductions for any par uh, oil and gas properties uh, to the extent that the deduction doesn't exceed uh, the, that partner's share of the property's basis. Now, let's do an example. Okay, we'll do a simple example here. So Alex contributes uh, $10,000 cash and then land uh, that has an, a basis of $20,000 to Alex. Uh, what is the fair market value? It does not matter. That's I'm not even going to tell you the fair market, fair market value because it doesn't matter. Uh, it's the basis of the property is transferred. So $10,000 and $20,000 uh, land with a $20,000 basis. So the initial basis is going to be $30,000 for Alex, right? $10,000 plus the $20,000. Now, Alex contributes those pro uh, the cash and the land uh, to the partnership in exchange for a 40% capital and profits interest in the partnership okay and then the partnership uh, goes on and the tax year happens where the partnership uh, earns a two hundred thousand dollar profit okay now alex is going to get 40 percent of that uh allocate that's the income allocated to alex so 40 percent times two hundred thousand is eighty thousand dollars so alex's share of the income is eighty thousand uh and then the partnership makes a distribution uh, to Alex, again, this is not a guaranteed payment. If there was a guaranteed payment, that would be income to Alex, but would have no effect on Alex's outside basis. But we have a distribution for the partnership of $5,000 cash to, to Alex. So that distribution is going to decrease and be uh, Alex's outside basis, but uh, it's going to be subtracted from his initial basis. So again, Alex, 30000 initial basis. Uh, share of income increases the outside basis. The distribution to Alex decreases the outside basis. So the ending outside basis for Alex is $105,000.